with this type of cases, you are going in when this process has already started by another doctor. There is a tendency to go over a lot of things that's already been discussed. Yes, you want to refer back to the previous consultation and, and uh, make sure there's no other changes. You want to get a bit of more information what's going on in a patient's mind as in what they're expecting today. You don't want to drag the discussion of results to too late because you want to make a plan as in... Um, explain the patient what's going on and then um, after that there will be some other things that will uh, be uncovered and then you can manage it in the data gathering you pick up some information that could be used in the lifestyle modification that was not discussed for example if patient drinks alcohol or um, is drinking a lot of caffeinated drinks that could be um, triggered to the palpitation. So that's something worth considering whether they could cut it down. That's the discussion that I would have with a patient is worried about taking medication lifelong. You might want to ask the patient more questions then to see what's the underlying concern about that and, and explain that um, based on the uh, benefits and the risks, it would make um, more sense for you to take it because you would um, actually reduce your risk of developing any stroke or um, reducing the symptoms so that you can lead a um, good quality of life. So you see how you manage that. Another yeah. thing really important here is you want to refer this patient to have an echocardiogram because um, you want to know the structural um, um, heart, whether there's any issues with that. With regards to the blood tests, there, there is uh, enough information from the blood tests, as in if you wanted to start a Pixaban, um, but things that you want to know also is about the, the patient's weight as well. It's important that you show that you're making a holistic plan because there were things mentioned about the wife uh, being sick and, and uh, have an explanation to, to the patient as in what could have caused this um, atrial fibrillation because it's still not true in the mind of the patient. Anything that you'd like to add, Sam? I think from perspective of, of John, I think obviously there was a lot of concern for him. And I think that little bit of reassurance that was provided was quite nice towards, towards the end about the solution of, you know, the medication and the plan for the long-term benefit of his medication. I think it would be, be really nice just to maybe just a little bit more, um, I guess have it to build just maybe a, a little bit more of that of that rapport, um, you know, because obviously he, he he feels very concerned and in that moment. He's very worried about, you know, what this is and, and, and how it's going to affect him in his life for the rest of his life, especially with what's happened to his dad. Um, so I, I think, yeah, maybe just a, a little bit more of that, that rapport building and empathy would have really, really helped uh, even even made the conversation a little bit easier for him. I think, you know, a little bit more empathy would have been even better. Hi, Dr. Amy, thank you very much for this wonderful session. In fact, this is the best session I've ever attended for this year, to be very honest. And I'm very grateful for it. Unfortunately, I had a brief uh, moment to jump out at an emergency. I wanted to check with you, what in situations where you're taking the history and it's only six minutes, you find that you're not able to hold on to something concrete in terms of the diagnosis. I think that could affect uh, one's confidence in you know trying to discuss management with the patient. How, how do you go about that? Because that's happened when I'm trying to practice with some of my friends sometimes to find out that it's only six minutes. I've been to the seventh minute. I've never to get anywhere with the uh, case. I, I don't know what the specific diagnosis is, and maybe I've got a lot of stuff on my mind. How do I manage that kind of situation? How do I come out of it? It's about managing uncertainty. Now, there might be cases where the examiners want to test your management of uncertainty. So they won't give you a specific clues as to what is a, a diagnosis. So it's vague. What you want to do there is embrace uncertainty. As long as you rule out the serious pathologies, the things that um, is really expected of you at the level of a GP to make a safe assessment, then you can yeah. reassure the patient, let them know that you've checked for this, you've checked for that, and you couldn't find anything concerning. And what you're going to do to find out more about this problem, it could be that you may need to do some further investigations. Um, it could be that um, at this point, there's no need for an investigation. However, if you do develop um, these symptoms, please get in touch because we'll need to reassess you. So 
as long as you um, do that, then you, you're going to score marks. There could be a case where the patient might worry that um, they have IBS, for example, and that is one of the concern. But in your history, you couldn't find a, a possible cause for this symptoms that they are having, the bowel symptoms, then um, you can explain that um, IBS is not a diagnosis that we make um, on a first presentation. It's important that we uh, rule out other things first. So I would recommend in the first instance, let's arrange some blood tests to check whether you don't have any um, problems with your gut. Uh, so for example, you might need to do some blood tests. You might need to check celiac screen. So there are things that you can still do to progress the work up if you don't know what's the problem. Now, there, there are cases when there's already been extensive investigation, and the answer here is not to give more investigation. One of the cases was the, the lady who had gynae problem and had various investigation in the case example. So the, this is um, yeah. medically unexplained symptoms. So the management here is more about psychosocial, managing the pain, and, and also um, possible referral to pain clinic to get on top of the pain. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for being you here. Very much for that. Great. Yeah. So any other question? If you found this video useful, you might want to watch the next video here in which I go much more detail how to prepare for the SCA. Click the video here to watch it. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.